Is it showing? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> it is on my side. <laughs> it's showing trailer. Uh, oh. There we are. Hey, it's the Bunny Show live <laughs> with your host and resident attraction and sex expert, Bunny. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Welcome to the party. I'm so excited for week two. This is awesome. Um, today, we've got Fort Worth over here uh, being my producer and fielding your questions, your comments in the chats. So any questions that you have, please join in the conversation. We would love to hear them. If the, the questions that you pose or the comments that you have uh, would be really great podcast topics. We'll probably pick some of those out as well. So um, yeah, just feel free to join in the conversation and, and have fun. Today's primary topic is um, how to keep sex exciting, even in long-term relationships, uh, marriages, that can really count for anything from a 30 year marriage to a three month relationship, because pretty much as soon as girls get into relationship, it kind of gets a little bit slack in the sex department. Um, a lot of that has to do with frame. A lot of it, it has all kinds of uh, connotations for your sex life. But the primary thing that I want you to keep in mind, as far as this conversation goes, I'm probably going to be referring to your wife, and not so much going through every option available. So just know that I'm talking about your girl, your relationship, whether you've been dating for a month and this is already an issue or you've been dating or married for 40 years and this is an issue. So all things considered. Um, also, I would like to just point out on the front end of this for all of you autists out there that clearly sexual things like this are not uh, applicable. I'm not talking about conversations about people who physically are unable to enjoy sex, that they have had some kind of injury or trauma or um, genetic predisposition that keeps them from physically being able to have sex. So I don't want to be like a, a buzzkill here. I just don't want to feel any, any junk about like, you know, all the, all the things that that applies to. Um, the main thing that I see in relationship is that things can go very quickly from a sexual standpoint, from being a routine to becoming a rut. And that is really what I want to keep all of you from ever getting into. I don't want anyone to be in a sexual rut ever. And there's a lot of stressors that come into our lives that um, just kind of naturally cause these kinds of problems and issues. Um, I know that, you know, you got a lot of you were with us whenever Fort Worth uh, blew his quad tendon. He ruptured his quad tendon several years ago. And a lot of you guys were here on Twitter with us. Um, and it's kind of difficult to go through stuff like that and maintain a super <laughs> aroused state. It's just the nature of the beast. You don't feel like it. You don't feel good. Uh, and you then dictate the way that your sex life is going. So understand that there are always going to be seasons where maybe there are ebbs and flows, but that doesn't have to be a lifetime change that negatively impacts your sex life because that would be the worst thing ever if it doesn't recover then we have a problem and that's that's what we're talking about so i'm curious and uh fort worth is like i said he's typing typing to you so he's going to put kind of some of the questions in there that i want to hear from you but what are some of the biggest sexual frustrations that you guys deal with in your relationship. I want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We both do. Um, and again, for those of you who just joined, if uh, the topic is not necessarily pertaining to today's subject, 
or if um, it would make a great podcast topic for Fort Worth and I to discuss together for you guys, we're probably going to uh, defer to the podcast for some of those also. So throw your questions in there. I, we want all of it, whether it pertains to today or not, because it will be answered in one way or the other. We do not we do not shy away from answering questions about sexual attraction, I can assure you. So the number one way to keep your relationship fresh sexually is consistency. I think that this is a little bit counterproductive or counterintuitive in people's minds because a lot of people think wrongly, think or assume that the more sex you have, the more boring it's going to get, the less you're going to want it. If you have sex every day, then it gets stale or boring. And that's what we're trying to keep from happening. Um, consistency for you could mean anything between daily sex, every other day, weekly. So a lot of this, for in our world, we consider consistent sex at least once a day. <laughs> that's not necessarily ideal for everyone. It may not fit your lifestyle. It may not fit your uh, sexual interest or drive. It may not fit. Um, you may travel a lot. Your wife may travel for work, whatever it is. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same for everyone. So please understand that consistency in sexual interest and sex drive is completely specific to you and your needs and your lifestyle. But truly, it is you as the man of the relationship. To It's up to you to dictate what that consistency needs to look like. Do you want sex every day? Do you want it every other day? Do you want it three times a, a week? You, you dictate that. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> gag on my own spit here real quick. Um, in your ideal situation, in your ideal scenario, what would be your ideal number of sexual days uh, in a week? I'm curious to find this out. This is always fascinating to me. Um, what we find, though, is that the more sex you have, the more sex you want. And it's just easier to do something every day, even if it's sex. So it becomes a habit the more frequently you do this. Um, you know that we're in fitness. It's no different than exercising every day. It's so much easier to exercise every single day than to exercise twice a week. It's so much easier to have sex every day than just periodically or haphazardly. Um, we have a great friend up in the Midwest that he is also in fitness, but all of uh, all of fitness, most fitness people also have coaches. So we have a phrase that coaches need coaches. I think that this applies across the board, but because we're in fitness, it applies to us especially. So we have a friend who uh, was on in a run program, aside from what he does training wise and business wise. And he was kind of struggling to increase his mileage. And so he, he was talking to his run coach and the coach said, instead of running Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and a long run on Saturday or Sunday, run every day. He said in his specific case, it was run eight miles every day, which just are incredible numbers. But I guess when you're an ultra distance runner, it's, it's nothing. But as soon as this friend of ours started running every day, eight miles every day, it became easier. It just became part of his daily routine. It just became part of his lifestyle. And that's what we want for you in your sexual, uh, sexual routine as well. So we want you to focus on trying to make it every day if that like works for your schedule, if if you feel like you can fit it in. Um, but also we want you to prioritize your sex because truly I say it all the time, every day, all over the place in a myriad of ways. Sex is truly the only thing that separates you and your wife and that relationship that you have from your relationship with anyone else. So you could be friends with a woman at work, but it's 
you're not roommates, you're not sharing space, you're not sharing a sexual relationship like you are with your wife. It's important that your romantic relationship has a really strong sexual uh, connection because it makes everything easier and it makes your life more pleasant. I mean, pleasurable sex, that, that makes everything better, makes everything easier. It makes dealing with the children easier. Um, we had a, a saying when my kids were little in our family that uh, blood, broken bones, or fire were the only reasons that you should sh knock on the bedroom door if that bedroom door was closed. There's just no reason that ki having kids has to get in the way of you having a strong sex life. There's a, <laughs> there, I, I always find it ironic that um, people who uh, are from lower income areas and families who kind of share a lot of have a lot of shared space in their homes and maybe they've got one or two kids even in the bedroom with them at night they tend to they tend to procreate like rabbits i mean having kids in the house has no bearing on whether you get to have sex or not and you letting it get in the way that's on you uh it makes work easier if uh, Mr. Drysdale's been riding your ass at work all day or, or you've had some frustrating client or, or frustrations through work, nothing kind of soothes that frustration and calms those nerves better than having a hot wife at home open to your sexual uh, suggestions and leading. So I want to encourage you to be the sexual leader in your household and uh, it just goes a long way in creating that desire with her as well. And then, of course, just like everyday occurrences, world events, politics, all of the things that frustrate you in your day-to-day -day world, sex just makes it easier to roll with all of these things. When you've got uh, the pleasure of sex, when you've got the... Uh, the the stressful release the stress release of sex you know it's essentially like exercise it releases endorphins it releases happy hormones to have sex and you're better connected to your spouse your wife so it's just a win win across the board to have consistent sex every day but you have to prioritize it and make it top of mind of your concern because literally everything is easier when you're having frequent, <laughs> consistent, wonderful sex. And she can either get on board or she can get off the boat. But we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I just want to encourage you mainly, number one, keeping things sexy and lively in the bedroom actually starts with consistency. Fort Worth, do you have any anything to add or questions that are coming around? Ryan Chung, he mentions for older guys with careers and responsibilities, and that can start at you know any age. Yeah, schedules get in the way. They do. How do you convince her that she's not too busy? Too busy is a huge uh, frustration and excuse. Every we'll call it a reason, but it's it's truly look at it as an as an excuse, kind of like always seeing the the your wife is the biggest toddler in the room. It's kind of that way. Her reasons are really oftentimes excuses. The dishes will still be there. The travel, she's got to come home sometime. She's going to leave sometime. If anything, you can treat it as a very hot way uh, to amp up your sex life because you can date more when you're not constantly in the same city, you know? Um, but mainly travel schedules, work schedules, you're both uh, important, you're both uh, busy at work, you're both career people. I respect that. I think it's amazing if you guys can pull it off. But always remember that the job, one thing that we say a lot, even in fitness with one another is applies here as well. And that's that these people are not going to remember your name. If your health, if your sex life is not strong and you're sacrificing uh, a client, a job, uh, co-workers in the name of your sex life, 
Remember always that those people are not going to remember your name. If you left that job tomorrow, if that client fired you, if you fired that client in a year, the people that you're talking about, that you're prioritizing over your sex life, likely won't even remember your name. And that's not to neg you out. It's just to have a little bit of a eyes wide open kind of reality shining on your, your life and how important prioritizing the relationship you and your wife have has to come first. It has to. There are always going to be big projects that take an all-nighter. There are always going to be, you know, clients on the other side of the world that you have to jump on a plane and fly to. There are always going to be um, prioritize, priorities and emergencies that kind of take precedence. They just genuinely have to uh, be at this time or happen right now uh, or happen on a moment's notice. But I would say that nine times out of 10, prioritizing your relationship, and that means prioritizing your sexual relationship, goes a long way in making sure that everything else flows a little bit, a bit, a little bit better. And what I find also is that just like with exercise, there are going to be a lot of exercise, you know, parallels here because it just fits. Just like with exercise, when you take the time to exercise and have sex and or you have more time, you have more energy to do the things that you need to do. So instead of dragging ass through this business proposition or presentation that you're trying to put together, have a little bit of sex get a little workout and you actually, your mind is sharper, your body feels good, you feel energized and everything just flows better. What do you think? Number two question. Uh-huh. For the guys, four to five times a week. Oh yeah, that's but a great number. How do you deal with the wife that only wants to have sex twice a week? How would you get to increase, you know, yeah. her frequency? Yeah. And we're going to talk, I think we're going to talk about that more in, in number three. Oh, do we? Okay. But at the same time, we can still, we can still certainly, it's, it's certainly applicable and it's a very real problem with a lot of men. So whenever your sex drives are not equal, that can be for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, and I talk about this a lot in my Ignite Your Wife uh, 30 Day Sexual uh, Reset it's a course that launches in March and the um, enrollment is now open. If you'd like to do that, we're going to have a, have a course in March and another, a repeat in October. So feel free to join in either one of those, but this can be for a whole slew of reasons. And a lot of that depends on her age, her stage in life, uh, how long you guys have been together and kind of more, more or less the frame that you set up at the beginning of your relationship and support along the way. So there are a slew of reasons that are what much more appropriate for something like a 30 day course than me listing right now, uh, because they're just so varied. But the one thing that I will say, just like I said, just a minute ago was she can either get on board or you're going to have sex elsewhere. Because and and I say that very carefully because we don't condone cheating, we don't condone um, dishonesty in your sexual relationships. So please understand, I'm just talking about setting up a frame to make sure that she understands just how adamantly you feel about having a strong sexual connection to her. Um, so if her sex drive is a little bit lower, I am not a fan of you know, doing more chores to sweeten the deal. None of this, you know, none of this works. She needs to get on board and she needs to understand that this is a priority in your life. And we will talk about that a little bit in the third step to uh, increasing your, um, keeping your, your sex fresh. But that's just a quick, quick little answer to that great question because it's a real problem for a lot of men. Anything else that you have on the books back there, baby? No, ma'am. Okay. The number two uh, way to keep your sex uh, fresh in marriage is variety. Now, I don't want to step on consistency, 
I want you to be consistent. That's number one. I want you to be consistent in your sexual uh, fun and playtime. But you also need to introduce a little bit of variety. So different positions, different uh, times of day, different outfits, different kind of instructions or locations. Maybe sometimes you want to fuck in the office. Maybe you want to fuck in the car. Maybe you want to fuck uh, at a hotel. Maybe you want to fuck in the restroom or the restroom at your favorite restaurant. Maybe you want to fuck on the kitchen. Maybe you want to fuck on the couch. Maybe you want to fuck in the bedroom. Change it up. Maybe you want to fuck in the bathroom. But I'm, now I'm just, my mind is reeling and I, I have to go because we have to go have sex. But whenever, whenever you keep the, whenever you're seeking to keep the relationship fresh and the sex fresh, it goes a long way to not get into a rut of a routine. So I have, um, if, if you guys find that you are kind of going through the same sexual routine, like you start in doggy style and then you go to a uh, missionary and then you go to like a clamshell and then you go to, you know, my, in my experience, Every single man, 100% of the time, finds his little his little rotation of positions that he likes, and it's like clockwork. He comes here, she comes here, she yeah, you know, it's it's inevitable. But it doesn't have to be, and it's not good for your sex life in the long run to always be doing the same routine every time. So if you would like a little variety in your sexual positions, but you're not feeling terribly creative which most men aren't. I respect that. Uh, I have the Fuck Like a Porn Star book. The link is in the description box and in the chat. It's just a great tool. It helps tell you, um, first of all, a lot of different positions to try. Second of all, the reason these other positions really work from both your standpoint and from hers, this book truly is a book that is meant for both of you or one or the other. So you can want, eat, read it together. You can hide it away from her and just keep it in your own uh, in your own library where she doesn't know it exists. Whatever works for you. It's a great tool to have at your disposal to kind of keep things fresh and keep things lively. Um, so change things. Um, you know, Maybe, maybe even foreplay is a great way to change things up a little bit. Uh, don't always use the same foreplay. Sometimes start uh, in, in the bedroom. Sometimes start in the kitchen. Sometimes, and a lot of women, guys I know, and this kind of applies to the question that, that I was asked a few minutes ago, but a lot of women just believe they are darn busy to have sex. They're in the middle of dishes and you're trying to fuck around with them and they want no part of it. That's when your frame has to remain strong. You're not going to beg. You're not going to, uh, but you're also not going to allow that kind of behavior to fly. Those dishes can still be there in the morning. I don't care how OCD you are. You can come back to the dishes tonight if it's that important to you. But right now we're going to fuck and I'm going to fuck you into a puddle and I'm going to fuck your brains out and you're going to blow me. And I want you to go put on that, that dress that I like so much, or I want you to go wear those stockings that I like so much. Take control of the situation, whatever the excuse, take control of the situation and don't let her busyness get in the way of your sexual desire because everyone wins in the long run. Whenever you keep control and keep a strong frame and keep your sex life strong. Um, one key here is early frame announcement and Fort Worth and I talk about this a lot. We've actually done a podcast on this as well. Um, but the gist of early frame announcement is that you are a sexual being, you are going to have sex and this is not up for debate or discussion. So as the leader of your relationship, as the man of your household in your, uh, in your marriage, you have to lead the way here. You have to guide and you have to make sure that she's aware and understands that this is not a topic that's up for debate. Um, girls like to 
girls outside of B, like to take this to a little bit more extreme level and consider this a, an abusive behavior. I'm not referring to you being a caveman by force, unless it's sexy, um, and being abusive. I'm not talking about rape scenarios here, unless that's your unless that's your sexy scenario. But being being strong minded and being strong with her that this is how it's going to be and that she understand and she get on board. Uh, one thing, and I don't remember, baby, where did this come from with the, um, if she is making excuses about sex? Royalty. Okay. Okay. So Royalty, I, I have always loved this, that Royalty has said that, you know, if she's trying to make an excuse about not having sex tonight, about her busyness, about, you know, like I said, you're trying to mess around and you're in the kitchen and she's trying to do the dishes or clean up the kitchen or get the kids' lunches ready for tomorrow and she's not having any of your sexual uh, advances, just kiss her on the cheek and say, okay, see you later and leave. Get your keys. No, no explanation is necessary. Turn off your phone. She doesn't need to know where you are. Her imagination will run wild and it will actually, it will actually behoove you to pay less attention to her for the next two or three hours. Go to a bar, watch the game, turn off your phone, enjoy a beer and enjoy knowing that her imagination going crazy while she's home alone actually works in your favor. She probably will not pull that more than twice. If you do this, it will not, uh, you will not have to do it often. If you try this, you will not have to try it often because no girl wants to think about what you might be doing when you're out, when you're away from her. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a little bit. Um, oh, this is an important point. So as far as early frame announcement, know that you love your wife. She loves you. That is not an excuse to not have sex. So a lot of women uh, or a lot of relationships, I would say, fall into the, well, he he loves me. So, you know, he understands that I don't want, I just don't want to have sex all the time. I just don't want to have sex more than twice a week. I just don't want to. I just don't. And they think that that because there's love there, and I do believe that there can still be love without a strong sexual uh, relationship. But because there's love, that's not an excuse to just pass pass sex off into an oblivion because that's not the way it goes. But with great frame, even if you are off on a business trip, she will fuck you into an oblivion because there's some dread there. There's a little bit of uh, anxiety there on her part. There's your early frame announcement. There's your strong frame that you're holding that you are a sexual being. She will fuck you into an oblivion. If you're lucky, you'll be so sore the next day when you're on your business trip that every time you move, you think about your hot wife at home and the hot sex that you had right before you left. And when you get back from your business trip, she will fuck you again. And it will be, it'll be like vacation sex. It'll be so good. Are there any stories that you guys have from times when this has been true in your life where um, your your wife kind of had a little bit of, of natural dread and anxiety and um, you found the sex was even hotter on her side because of this? Also, if you haven't picked up uh, Fort Worth's book on dread, it is truly the greatest game technique that you can use. And it applies whether you're doing pickup, whether you're in a dating relationship or whether you're married. And it doesn't matter if you've been married a year or 50 dread works. And it's a healthy way to kind of keep things sexually alive and inspired as well. So pick that up if you haven't already. Um, I will add that as far as variety goes, There's a point when guys especially kind of want to try everything new, everything that they've seen in porn, everything they've read in my Fuck Like a Porn Star book, 
uh, everything that they've seen or heard about their buddies talking about. Don't throw too much at her at once because if you do, number one, she's like, where are you getting all of this bullshit? You know, it, it, it actually makes her gun shy and turns her off a little bit. So it's important to remember uh, to try new things in moderation. P throw in a new tongue swirl here if you're doing oral. oral. Throw in a new position here that you haven't tried. Or maybe it's just been five or so years since you did it. Try new techniques, new toys, uh, new, new ways of kind of revving things up and getting the party started. But do them one at a time in moderation, uh, because otherwise, if you are always throwing new stuff at her every time that you are sexually uh, active with her, she's going to reach a point where she's just like, can we just have normal sex, please? And so it kind of makes her step back if you're always throwing brand new stuff at her, because then she doesn't get to just enjoy. She's always kind of on the defense, and that's not what you want. Women are naturally on the defensive enough <laughs> sexually. You don't want to add more, more to that. Okay. So there's a healthy amount of variety and I want you to have variety along with your consistency, but not too much at one time. Do you have anything to add or any questions coming around that? Okay. David, the rank has a question and it may pertain to the next point. Okay, so, good. So I'm going to put it in front of you. I'm going to read a question on the topic. He's, his wife is 36 years old. They've been together eight years. What if the wife has pretty much checked out of wanting sex? We'll do starfish once a week, but she thinks she's menopausal, too busy, kids, etc. He says, I've implemented dread, gotten fit, better dressed, more playful, more charming, more attractive, but I think she just doesn't find me appealing anymore. Okay. The next step, other than Ignite Your Wife course, we need to we need to be on this. Like seriously, for less than $25 a day, you can we can nip this in the bud across the board. However, my quick answer for Dave the Rake, 36-year-old, you are likely, first of all, she's likely not going through menopause, but I'm no doctor. Um, but I would say, since you have done all of these other other things, you've you've done everything that we've suggested uh across the board um with what you can do to improve yourself as the man, I would next suggest that she get to her doctor. She needs to have her hormones checked. She needs to have her levels checked. She needs to have blood work done. She just needs kind of a full panel of stuff um, checked medically because it could be something as simple as a hormone replacement, um, a little extra B vitamin, she may be anemic, so she needs a little bit of extra iron. But don't just start throwing over-the-counter drugs at her or supplements at her. Actually get it checked and see what see what we can do medically. But make sure, I would even venture to you go to the appointment with her because we need to be sure that this doctor understands she's not tired. She's not overworked. She's not exhausted. She had the energy early in your relationship. Am I right? So in order to regain that, what we've got is a, is the habit of making excuses and justifying her um, busyness in other areas to sacrifice your sex life. So the doctor that you attend with her needs to understand that this is really negatively impacting our sex life. And that's not okay with us because we want to have a strong sexual bond. Does that make sense? It's great. Okay. Anything else that you can think of right now? Nope. Okay. The third, the third key to keeping your sex alive and fresh, and I've already touched on this a number of times, is no excuses. Uh, <laughs> Roy, to, to quote him again, he has a great line about her, her, uh, her legs might be broken, but her, is her jaw broke? You know, there's just, you know, maybe her, her grandmother died. Maybe, maybe she's on her period. Maybe she, you know, just had a car wreck. Maybe, maybe lots of them. <laughs> she just had a baby. There are, there are legitimate reasons not to have sex today, but there's probably not a legitimate reason not to have sex tomorrow. 
So always remember that, that occasional passes on her side are acceptable. But truly, unless you have the most accident prone girl or are really going through a season of life where she's got several deaths in the family or several true emergencies happening at one time in one year, I would say on average, more than two, we call them by nights, more passes, more by nights from her side than two is too many. So keep all of her real life stuff in mind and her real life stressors in mind, but also understand that women will make a lot of excuses as to why they can't have sex. And really, they truly are excuses. They're not reasons. She'll call them reasons. They are excuses. I've already said that, but it's important for you to get that in your head. She will call them reasons. They're not reasons. They're excuses. So whether she has a headache, great. You know what's great for headaches? Sex. It is. It's good for, it's good. It's like exercise. 10 minutes in, the headache is gone. Menstrual cramps, you know what's great for menstrual cramps? Actually having sex. It goes a long way. She doesn't feel sexy. That's okay. You find her sexy. That's okay. If she doesn't feel it, that's that's not what's the problem here. It's, do I find you sexy? Yes, I do. Okay, let's go. Um, you know, if she's actively on her period, that's for you to decide. It doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, then that's for you to decide in your own, in your own life. But the, my, the, the main point is to not allow any of her excuses to derail your sex life because one excuse becomes another excuse. Oh, that excuse worked that last time. I'm going to try it again this time. Oh, that excuse, uh, you know, it was a big enough one. So maybe he'll give me a week before he wants it again. All of this stuff is stuff that you have to keep in mind as the leader of your sexual relationship. Um, Another thing about excuses is whenever you derail her excuse and you actually go ahead and have sex, it works out great because she then has a pleasurable experience. One thing that I want all of you guys to hear really loud and clear is that when you are having sex, when you're in the act of having sex and she is responding sexually uh, like she's, whether she's telling you that she's orgasming, whether she's just, her breathing is different, whether her moaning is different, whatever she, your wife does to respond to you sexually and indicate that she is uh, coming or enjoying what you're doing. The number one thing that men do is they go harder and or faster. They change things and that works for, for men. That works for men. As you are feeling the pleasure of sex, you go harder and faster and it feels better. For women, whenever we are responding sexually to what you're doing, the best thing that you can do is to keep doing exactly what you're doing. <laughs> don't go harder. Don't go faster. Keep the exact same pace. Keep the exact same thrust. Keep the exact same tongue swirl. Whatever it is that you are doing in that moment, keep doing it. I say this on Twitter, and I don't think you guys believe me, or you kind of gloss over it, but truly, as she responds, the key is for you not to get excited and think about the way that you like it whenever, whenever you're getting more um, responsive sexually, but to think about the way that she responds sexually, and the way she responds sexually is for you to keep doing what you're doing so that she can completely come to orgasm and fully enjoy that. Now, we're not putting her first here. Make no mistake. This is not an excuse that, that she's leading this charge. It's just that this behooves you. This actually benefits you. If she's having more fun sexually and is and you are allowing her to fully experience this amazing thing called orgasm, she will want it more. She will crave it more. She will bask in the glow of your dick more. It is a win-win. It will become less difficult for you to talk her into sex if you let her fully experience the pleasures of sex. So don't make it all about her. 
Make it about you first. However, whenever she's responding, reward her responses by doing the thing that is helping her along and helping her more enjoy uh, what you're doing. Again, like we talked about, if she absolutely gives you an excuse, and you know it's an excuse. I'm not talking about uh, the, the one night when she comes to you and says, listen, I need a buy night tonight. I just, I feel like I'm going to vomit or whatever the problem is. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when women come to you and are making excuses for not having sex tonight, kiss her on the cheek. I'll see you later. Grab your keys and walk out the door. Don't give, ex don't give reasons. Don't tell her where you're going. Don't worry. I'll be back in a little, I'll be back later. You go on to bed. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Go to the bar, go to your office go to the library, wherever you need to go to hang out for a few hours, two, three hours. And don't give any explanation when you get back as to where you were. It's not up for discussion or debate because she did not want to have sex and she was full of excuses. So you have nothing that you need to uh, justify to her as to where you were. Her imagination will run wild. I guarantee she was blowing at your, up your phone while you were gone. But that phone was turned off, so she doesn't know where you were. She doesn't know what you were doing. And you weren't spending the entire three hours just messaging back and forth with her about where you are either. So make sure that you allow her imagination to aid in the seduction. And this will not happen often. I can assure you on that one. I did not make that up either. That is not my, um, that is not my answer, but it is a good one. As soon as I heard it, I thought, that is 1,000% accurate, and that 1,000% will work. So try it, and uh, you won't have to do it many times. Uh, we also did a podcast on letting her imagination aid in your seduction. Uh, Fort Worth and I talked about that in, in, um, in a pretty good little podcast that we did. So check that out also if you haven't listened to that. <sighs> If you're not having enough sex in your relationship and need to keep it fresh, my 30-day relationship reset is exactly the tool that you need to get your, your sex <coughs> life completely back on track. It will help now. It will help in the future. It will help your quality of life across the board for a lifetime to come because I don't want you to just have sex today. I want you to have sex today and tomorrow and next year. And I want you to fully enjoy the wife that you've chosen because nobody gets married thinking that you're not going to have sex or that you're going to get divorced. You get married because you want to spend the rest of your life with this person. And so I want the rest of your life to be pleasurable and sex filled because it just improves the quality across the board. So we've got those three big points as to how to keep your relationship fresh sexually, whether you've been married uh, 30 years or whether you've been dating for a month and it's already getting a little bit stale. Keeping a strong frame the, from the front end is the best way to maintain a strong uh, sexual relationship throughout your relationship, however long that lasts. But if it's gotten a little bit stale, number one, consistency. Number two, variety. And number three, Absolutely, positively, no excuses. And remember, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, her reasons are actual excuses. So you need to remember that. Um, also, if your problem goes beyond a little bit of dread and a little bit of consistency, remember about my Ignite Your Wife course. It's 30 days of video. You've got one-on-one -on -one communication with me. You've got a workbook. You've got emails every day. We are going to be in constant contact for 30 days. And we are going to fix your fucking because it's that important. It's important to the rest of your life. Now, are there any other questions or comments? It's a great time for Q&A. We got one. And this is a, we've covered this before. My wife is thinking about implants. She's nervous. Any advice? I don't care either way. That's Marty. I love it. I love it, Marty. That is a great question. We have done a podcast on this also, um, but I will answer it because I am pro. I am pro breast augmentation. 
it makes women feel more comfortable. It makes women feel more confident, especially post childbirth. You know, if you finish having kids, uh, it goes a long way. Although, um, so I've had three children. I got my breast implants after two, mainly because I was in fitness. I, I loved my breasts, but um, mainly because I was in fitness. And when you're in fitness, your body weight, your body fat stays pretty low. And it's hard to have breast tissue whenever you have low body fat. But I would love to see the stats on how many women get breast augmentation. And then within a year of healing, <laughs> end up pregnant because I was then, I then had another child because, and I, I blame, uh, I blame the breast augmentation. But Mainly, it helps her confidence level, and it goes a long way. So depending on how comfortable your wife is with uh, surgery in general, it may be a surgery in general kind of concern. Uh, it may be that she doesn't want to look like a porn star, or she's afraid that she's going to look trashy if she, had, if she goes too large, or she's worried about the social connotations. Depending on where you live, you know, we are in fitness. And we live in Texas. Everybody has boobs here. Like, it's just a thing. It's like you graduate high school and you get a breast augmentation for graduation. It's a normal thing here. So I have a little bit of a skewed uh, double whammy here in this area. But I will say uh, there are like areas of the country where it's just not the norm. And so depending on what your circumstance is, I would say... Um, the best thing to do is go to a couple of consultations with a couple of different doctors. And I suggest at least three, I would say three to five, go ahead and consult with them. You will find um, a doctor that either she's comfortable with and soothes her nerves and she can test different sizes and realize that she doesn't have to have like Anna Nicole Smith boobs just because she's getting a boob job. It can be, very simple and natural looking. Um, or after consulting, even with some really great uh, surgeons in the area, she may say, it's actually not that important to me. I've actually changed my mind. But one way or the other, she'll be making a decision based on real information and real experience with doctors. Because there, when you're consulting with um especially cosmetic procedures, you're going to walk into some offices and see the staff or meet the people or meet the doctor. And it's just not going to click. And you're just going to be like, I got to get out of here. Or you're going to meet a doctor and staff and think these people are amazing. He's not rushing me through. He's answering all of my questions. Um, She's giving me all of the options and I feel comfortable with the, with the options that are available for this breast augmentation. So it looks natural, but I will say breast augmentations come a long way. These, the boobs that are coming out right now are so natural looking and natural feeling that it will just give her more confidence, even if it just returns her breast tissue appearance to what she feels like it should it looked like uh before kids so since since you what is it marty yes marty since it's not necessarily a personal preference for you and you don't have a preference either way go with her consult with with three to five doctors get a feel for it she'll either kind of make up her mind one way or the other She'll understand all of her options and she'll know then I think that will will kind of soothe her and let her know whether she wants to do it or not. So it actually helps probably that you don't have a preference either way that you that you uh, like her boobs the way they are. But it wouldn't hurt to have them more lifted and perky. I got a question from Lava Dog and it's it's a common question. Oh, like getting girls introduced into kink. And he says specifically like. Breath play or rope, just to keep it exciting. Yeah, I think it's good to push boundaries one small step at a time. So we have a phrase that you you push until she says stop. Um, but that doesn't mean that you go from quiet missionary in the dark to tiring her up and like whipping her with with you know a paddle. So there's a lot of steps in between then. 
So just slowly introducing a little bit more extreme in the direction that you want to go goes a long way into people's comfort. I will say girls do not want to talk about sex outside of the bedroom. Most of them. So trying to talk to her about doing more extreme stuff or taking it up a notch usually will fall on deaf ears and put her guard up. So I would recommend not trying to talk her into more extreme sexual behaviors. Instead, when you're in there, when you're actually having sex, a girl's ick factor lessens. So suddenly she thinks ass play is sexy and suddenly, she, you know, fluids don't bother her. And suddenly all these things that if they were just being discussed or even, even just seen by her, like on porn or in a picture, would be gross are no longer gross. So keep that in mind as you're slowly pressing forward in the direction that you want to go with a little bit kinkier sexual play. Just do one step at a time and, and allow her to respond to it. And then if she responds favorably, maybe push a little bit more, or maybe that's as far as you go that time. And then in a few more, a few more sexual, you know, experiences, you kind of introduce it again and you push a little further again. And that goes a long way into more extreme sex play. Wouldn't you think? Yes. Yeah. That's perfect. I love it. Well, perfect. You can't beat that. I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Love a dog. Getting into kink. What do you think? Anything, anything else that you can think of? No, it's good. I hope that you have genuinely enjoyed this conversation. Uh, whether you are on the live stream now, uh, watching this broadcast live, which I sincerely appreciate all of you who are. That is just incredible to me. I am having a great time with this. So just plan every Sunday, 10 a.m. Uh, Central is our timestamp right now. And I'm loving it. Um, if you enjoyed this, but still need a little bit more and want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one question answering and direction, Know that one time only this uh, this March 2023 enrollment uh, is going to be the only time that this course is available at the price that it is now. So it's going to go up in price for the October session. This is a beta test version. There may be some typos in the workbook. There may be some, you know, uh, times when when the video just misses a smidge. I'm working out the kinks, but I want you to go along with me and I want to help you truly reset your sex life 1000% so that you can have an enjoyable rest of your life together with your wife, because it's that important. If you have nothing else to add, thank you so much for enjoying in for joining this conversation. Thank you for all of the positive feedback that you give us across the board, whether it's Twitter, here, whether it's our podcast, you guys keep sending in your questions, your comments, the concerns that you're having in your uh, sexual attraction, attraction life. If you like this, please like, subscribe, and share with anyone that you think it might apply to. Uh, and keep the questions coming. We love to get them and we love to hear your stories and suggestions. So thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, we want you to win. Bye. <laughs> I love it. So much fun.